<laughs> Before we go any further, just want to say today's video is going to be brought to you by Fandomion. If you want to buy some really awesome anime merch from My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, and Haiku, and so many other anime, I recommend using my link in the description box to check them out. And there's free worldwide shipping on orders over $39. You'll also get an additional 5% off using my promo code down below. For any of you guys who might be interested or on the fence, I highly recommend checking out the website. Pay attention to the size chart. That'll be the biggest thing I would tell you guys. But with that being said, though, let's jump back into today's video. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys into the board to Naruto Next Generation discussion on the fallout from board to chapter 78. And today, I want to talk to you guys about why everyone is focusing on Kawaki going off the deep end. While it is extremely important, this is one of those times where we can't completely be focused on what we're seeing that is happening, but we also have to keep our eye on what's not happening in the story, which in this case is a motto. Now, I know the knee jerk reaction to this is that Kawaki is the focus of our attention for reason because he's continued to escalate things in the Naruto universe. Ever since he reawakened the power of his Koma seal, to say that Kawaki has gone off the deep end would be an understatement of all understatements. It would be like just saying Madara Uchiha was really strong. Kawaki not only kills Boruto right in front of Naruto, but he even states he has no problem killing again if it means he can protect Naruto. He got annoyed by the fact that Boruto was still alive, sealed Naruto and Hinata to prevent them from getting in his way when he got ready to finish the job then turned around and attacked Boruto with killing intent and ended up giving Boruto the scar over his eye which was meant to be a killing blow aimed at Sarda before Boruto stepped in to save her which resulted in that scar over her eye. However taking things a step further while everyone is looking at Kawaki and searching for him and as we as fans are eagerly anticipating the action sequences that are coming it's important to look at what's being set up in the background right now right in front of our very faces. Amato is once again hiding in plain sight with another plot twist for the story and it's something that has been customary with how his character's been used in the past. Nobody paid attention to him back during the early car days of the manga. The focus was on Delta versus Naruto and why these car enters are as strong as they are, who is Kashin Koji, why does he look like Jiraiya, and Naruto challenging Jigen with the help of Sasuke, and then all the outrage that came from Jigen knocking the ramen bowls outside side of Naruto, but when we least expected it, out popped a motto with the information that turned the entire verse on its head with all the extended lore that he provided us with when it comes to the Susuke clan and it became a domino effect after that. Then in the post Ishiki era, we could see that he was up to something with Kawaki and while everyone was focused on Code, Ada, and Damon and wondering when they're going to make their move, how's Code going to get his limiters taken off, Code versus Boruto and Kawaki and etc, Kawaki was getting the conditions met to activate his karma and it was being built up in plain sight and so too were Amado's motives which led to that bombshell with Shibai being revealed. Right now we all have our eyes on Kawaki and the battles that are coming up that are going to be meant to distract us but in the last manga chapter we had Amado get told that Konoha is looking for Kawaki and that all options are on the table because he sealed away Naruto and is likely going to try and kill Boruto. Amado at that point in time he looked shocked but the face later on was drawn with an expression that makes it clear that he was already taking this new information and formulating a plan. It makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Amato is someone who has a lot riding on Kawaki and if we take Amato's words at face value and that he was being truthful it makes even more sense. Amato said that he needs Kawaki to revive his daughter because as we all know Delta is a cyborg clone of his daughter. Delta has the memories of his daughter. She has the voice of his daughter. She looks like his daughter but she doesn't have a personality or her soul, which is what Amato ultimately wants. He wants the real thing, not a consolation prize, which is why he has Kawaki's karma seal that is encoded with the data of his daughter, because he's hoping that Kawaki will plant a new karma seal onto his daughter's clone Delta in order to have that karma extract Abiki's data into Delta, which in turn will restore her soul and her personality to the Delta clone. Amato is desperate enough that he went to those links that he's not going to allow Kawaki to just walk out of the village
footage will be captured and potentially killed by Konoha if things get too out of hand. If he loses Kawaki, he loses his daughter. It's plain and simple. I've seen some of you guys in the comment section over the last few months ask, well, if Amado wants his daughter back so badly, why doesn't he just have the Rennie Rebirth done? Why didn't he have it done when he first got to Konoha? Which is a reminder, number one, there's nobody in Konoha with the Rennie gone to revive her. And even if he approached Sasuke beforehand to do so, Sasuke wasn't going to give up his life to revive Amado's daughter. Especially Amado, someone who he doesn't even know who was just an enemy. Which is a reminder, Nagato's words about chakra levels in the Rennie Rebirth were retconned in the fourth great ninja war and doubled down in the Naruto fourth data book, where it stated that it's a life for life jutsu. Unless Sasuke pulls an Obito and has the Gidomazu husk inside of him, and he has Zetsu sustaining his life force, using Rini Rebirth to revive Amato's daughter would have killed Sasuke. Edo Tensei, it isn't an option for his daughter coming back to life either, because he wants the real her, with actual blood in her veins. Edo Tensei, at the end of the day, they're zombies in a story about ninjas, but they're zombies. That's no different than having the Delta clone, but the only leg up is that the Edo Tensei would at least have Abiki's personality. Amato's only true path forward is Kawaki, and that makes him very dangerous because when you really think about it, when Kawaki's pushed into a corner, so too is Amato because they are interlinked. You really think a man who's willing to not only work with Jigen, despite knowing Jigen was an Otsutsuki vessel and had a literal Otsutsuki inside of him and was willing to play six dimensional chess over the span of several years to ultimately betray Jigen, have Jigen killed, and have the circumstances set up to take down Ishiki. If he was willing to go through such extremes before, what makes you think he won't pull something crazy against Konoha if it means keeping a path forward to revive his daughter, especially now that Naruto is out of the picture? Those dots by Amato's face in the manga chapter are no different than what we've seen before when we saw Amato when he was scheming something in the past or he was withholding information or when Sumire was shown observing something that she had been thinking about only to have it later on revealed later on that she was paying attention the entire time. I think there's a strong possibility that Amato ends up doing one of two things, either helping Konoha by subduing Kawaki via the shutdown code that he specifically implanted into Kawaki when he gave him the karma seal again, or he's going to leave to assist Kawaki in some way. While option one seems like it would be the most viable, it makes the most sense if you look at it from a simple perspective, the truth is is that for the sake of conflict and then for the sake of the story, this cannot be the case. It will bring into question more things about Amato from some of the people in Konoha like Shikamaru, but we also run into the question of does someone in Konoha talk Kawaki into releasing Naruto and Hinata or finding a way to force him to do so? That shutdown code that Amato has over Kawaki is all the incentive needed to force him to comply in such an easy route that I don't think you can take it because it effectively eliminates a lot of the conflict. The second option though it has a lot more room to it amato he isn't stupid he knows that with kawaki being hunted down the longer it goes the greater the risk he has for losing his way to bring his daughter back to life because any battle could result in kawaki being killed since kawaki right now is running lower on chakra so the playing field is being leveled with some of these other characters in kawaki he'd be placing a lot of hope in the idea that konoha won't want anything to happen to kawaki until they can actually free naruto and Hinata. There's no guarantee that that's going to be the case. A man like Amato is going to be someone who hedges his bets and makes the best possible move that benefits him. And that move is to literally walk next door to the other room and start speaking to Ada. After all, his alliance with Ada was conditional on Amato putting her in proximity to Kawaki and making Kawaki fall in love with her. Otherwise, Ada said she'll kill him. With Kawaki out the village, there's nothing to stop Ada from walking over to Amato and shoving a size 16 heel on all the way up Amato's rear end. Getting out ahead of things and speaking to her about finding Kawaki, it buys Amato more time. If Ada does agree to work with them to take Kawaki's side, right now is the time to move because all the key players in Konoha that should have been watching over them, they're now all currently gone. That's not by mistake. Ask yourself, what is Sai going to do? Sai. This guy was already shown simping over Ada when we first saw her. Like the man didn't already have a wife at home. If they did decide to leave, Ada is just going to show off those long legs and Sai is going to fold just like he did at the train station. Or Ada just tells Damon to kick Sai's head off. The other thing is that Amato has a shutdown on Delta, which gives him a path forward to render her unconscious, scoop up her body, and travel with 
with Ada and Damon to Kawaki's location so they can ultimately leave the village. And because we know Ada can fly and it's implied that Damon can fly as well, that explains how they all leave the village. One of them takes Amato who's holding Delta's unconscious body and the other one takes Kawaki and they fly out of there. Amato is desperate right now and there's nobody around him who can actually check him, which makes it feel like once we get our battle fixed with all the Kawaki battles that are coming, Amato is likely pulling out of Konoha with Ada and Damon. That being said, I'm curious to know how you guys feel about this. What do you think Amato's next move is going to be? While you think that over, click here to watch my Black Clover Chapter 352 review or click here for this Naruto Explained video.